Well, the Oklahoma Sooners may not have a LeBron, and they may not have an MJ either. You're airing this. <laughs> I know you needed somebody like me to tell you these obvious things. But my point is that the Sooners still have a James, and they still have a Jordan. As in Christian James, and as in Jordan Woodard. And both, on Thursday night in the West Regional Semifinal in Anaheim, played vital roles and contributed big time in the Sooners' convincing win over Texas A&M, thus the Sooners advancing to the Elite Eight on Saturday for the West Regional Championship, where they will face the top seed in the region, the Oregon Ducks, who beat Duke in impressive fashion. We'll talk about that later. First, though, the game for Jordan Woodard, and boy, was he impressive, okay? 22 points, 14 of them coming in the first half, and it was so vital because Woodard, not Buddy Hill necessarily, but it was Woodard who really led the charge for Oklahoma halfway through that opening half of play. Remember, the Sooners, as we've seen them do several times during the second half of this season, get off to slow starts, and this was no exception. A&M began the game on a 13-6 run, you know, highlighted by Jalen Jones hitting a couple of threes for the Aggies. And by the way, Jones, you know, only ended up with 11 points on three of 11 shootings. Who would have thunk that? But he started off well, and the Sooners missed their first three threes. And, um, you know, he only made one of his first three shots. Isaiah Cousins, anything he put up, it wasn't even going to be close to the bucket. And the Sooners, you know, they didn't start off well, and the Aggies were taking advantage of good looks that the Sooners were giving them from the outside. So it's 13-6 to a and &M. But the Sooners would get their game going and would play better defense. And Jordan Woodard would orchestrate the Sooners' charge. The Sooners would score 9 of the next 11 and tie the game up at 15. We'd see the Sooners also, too, get up by as many as 6 until the Aggies cut it down to a 4-point lead, I think, at 26-22. And that's when the Sooners would really expand that lead. And along with the terrific scoring of Jordan Woodard and also, too, his assist, he had 5 for the game, we saw Christian James come off the bench and be instrumental. His long-range shooting hit four threes for the game, and we know that the Sooner bench this year, for the most part, really hasn't done much in terms of the scoring. That would change, though, on Thursday night. And again, Christian James is a big reason why. Two weeks ago against West Virginia, he had a big game, and thanks to him, Oklahoma almost beat West Virginia. They should have in that uh, game a couple of weeks ago in the uh, Big 12 semifinals in Kansas City, but lost to the Mountaineers. But James, this time, um, you know, his contributions would actually lead to a big Sooner victory. And you get contributions like that from your bench, then you know things are going to go your way. Sooners eventually would get a large lead entering halftime, 19-point margin. Who would have thunk that? against an A&M team that really specializes in rebounding and in defense. And if anything, the Sooners had a slight rebounding advantage entering the locker room at halftime. That was an even bigger surprise. For the game, the Sooners ended up out-assisting the Aggies 23-14. to It was truly an example of team basketball in every single way possible. You know, Buddy Heald, it's not like he had a terrible game, but he didn't get off to a great start. Heald would end up with 17 for the game, 6 of 13 from the field, and would end up with 10 rebounds. So he definitely contributed, but no question, Jordan Woodard with 14 of his 22 coming in the first half, and as soon as he raced that early deficit, would get the lead and would build it, thanks in large part because of him and, of course, you know, Christian James. Talking about Jordan and James. Right there, there's your reference from the beginning. The Aggies, though, that's a team that doesn't quit. And early in the second half, they took that 19-point deficit, and they nearly chopped it in half. At one point, got down to about 11. Of course, Ryan Spangler, this is where the senior forward made his contribution. At one point, getting three buckets in a row. Imagine if he hadn't. That league could have gotten down to single digits, and suddenly the game could have taken on another dimension. But the Sooners would never let that lead get smaller than 11. In fact, they would balloon that lead back up to the 17, 19-point range again, and the Sooners would never really relinquish control of the game from that moment on. For the Aggies, they know that it was a horrible shooting night for them. I mean, that's really putting it as an understatement. For the game, they only shot 34% from the field, and you definitely give the Sooners credit um, for that for the most part. Three-point shooting after the Aggies made three of their first five from beyond the arc. They ended up 
only making three of their next 22 shots. Six of 28 for 21 percent. You don't need a basketball expert or somebody like me to tell you that that's not going to cut the mustard to winning a game. And no question, the Aggies shooting from the field and basically from two-point range wasn't there all night, and not even from the free throw line, where both teams, by the way, were bad. The Sooners, no question, emphasized the word team and the letter T when it comes to team ball. When the Aggies would apply double teams, the Sooners basically were able to bounce fast. They were able to find the open man and able to execute on those open shots. This was not one-on-one -on -one style for the most part tonight, but rather the team concept and making sure to get as many people involved as possible. And you saw that with Woodard in his big game tonight. You saw that with Buddy Heald, which was not a big game, but 17 points and 10 rebounds. Hey, you'll take it. And for Spangler, who had double digits in points and nearly double digits in rebounds, and with Ladden getting a double in terms of points with 10, you'll take that too. And of course, with Christian James hitting four threes coming off the bench, it's no wonder that the Sooners had a very productive night and they're moving on to Saturday. So it will be the Sooners and the Ducks, the top two seeds from the West region, meeting on Saturday in Anaheim for the right to go to the Final Four, which will be, of course, in Houston next Saturday. So keep that in mind. And of course, these teams have a little bit of basketball history, but yet to go way back when to the first ever Final Four played back in 1939, when the Sooners lost to the Ducks, and the Ducks went on to win the national championship, the first ever, when they beat Ohio State in the national title game. Of course, that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> and, of course, most recently, these two teams have had some athletic history. Of course, that was 10 years ago in football, and the screw job from uh, Eugene, Oregon. Gordon Reese, the replay official, the referees, the onside kick, all that junk. But, uh, hey... Who remembers that, right? <laughs> but seriously, Oregon has one heck of a basketball team, Dana Altman. And that's another thing, too. Dana Altman and Juan Kruger have something in common. They both used to coach at Kansas State and pretty close in the same era, too. I mean, um, um, of course, Kruger went to Kansas State and actually coached the Wildcats, almost got them to a Final Four in 88. And, of course, Dana Altman, um, way back when, coached at K-State in the uh, early 1990s. So there's... Kind of a um, common factor there between the two guys. But they'll go head-to-head -head on uh, Saturday. The winner will win the region and go to the Final Four. And for the Final Four on Saturday, they'll play either Kansas or Villanova. It was a Thursday that saw four regional semis, and all four of those games, by the way, ended up being double-digit wins for the higher seed. That includes Oklahoma, who wins by 14 over Texas A&M, the Aggies. Congratulations to them for a solid season getting this far. Um, they still, though, have not made it past the regional semis, past the Sweet 16 in their school history, but still it was one heck of a ride uh, for that particular team. And for the Sooners, on to the Elite Eight, and a matchup with the Ducks, top two seeds in the West region in Anaheim on Saturday. Congratulations to OU, Boomer Sooner.